Good day, grade 12. Welcome to your lesson on plant response to the environment. One of the very first important things that we need to do is to look at what a response is. So now there are two definitions on the slide. The first one states that a response is the behavior that is manifested by a living organism, which is the result of an external or internal stimulus. So what is a stimulus? A stimulus is anything that causes you to react. So, for example, if you smell really nice food, your mouth begins to water. Okay, so responses are actions of the body. And the body does different actions. It could be muscle contractions, gland secretions, or brain actions. The second definition states that a response is any reaction of a living thing to stimulus. Okay, so now external stimulus can, can be either light, gravity, or water. Okay, so a response is any reaction of a living thing to stimulus. So all organisms show response to stimulus, which could be changed in external or internal environments such as your temperature and your light so in this section we are going to be looking at how do plants how do plants respond to different stimulus so when we are looking at the section i always want you to have a picture of a sunflower in mind so sunflowers are a good example of how plants respond to external stimulus because plants like sunflowers they will always grow towards light. They are always going to respond towards light. So if you're looking at those two pictures, you'll see that the two sunflowers, the sunflowers in the two pictures are facing the light. Okay, so when plants, when sunflowers uh, 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 move, they move towards the light. They respond towards the light. And later on, when we are looking at the different tropisms, we'll actually see that this is called phototropism, okay? So phototropism is when a plant growth responds to light, okay? So as we're going over this section, always think about the sunflower. So now different hormones are responsible for bringing about this response. The reason why these plants are able to move towards the light is because of different hormones, okay? So plants have hormones, okay? So then you begin to ask yourself, what is a hormone, okay? So remember when you're learning about the endocrine system, you are learning about different glands and how these different glands secrete different hormones and how these different hormones uh, have different functions. So plants have the same uh, uh, um, hormones okay not the same hormones but plants also have hormones okay so a hormone is a chemical substance that is produced in small quantities in one part of an organism and then transports it to another part where it performs its function so hormones either stimulate or inhibit certain physiological processes so we know now that as humans in order for us to grow we need a particular hormone and that hormone is what it's the human growth hormone okay so remember when you're learning about the endocrine system you learned about the human growth hormone the human growth hormone is responsible for our growth that is why we're able to grow okay right now you're tall um, you have a deep voice, um, but when you were a little child, when you were five, you were shorter, you had a squeakier voice. But because of hormones, as you were growing, all of that brought about changes, okay? And what brought those changes are hormones, okay? So plants also have hormones, and, and uh, on your slide it says, Hormones are chemical substances that act like messenger molecules in the body. So after being made in one part of the body, they travel to other parts of the body where they help control how cells and organs do their work. So hormones are like special chemicals your body makes, okay? The same thing in plants, okay? Plants have hormones and these hormones help the plants to do certain things 
just like moving towards the light when you saw that sunflower moving towards the light a whole a specific hormone is responsible for bringing about that action so hormones are important when you start to go through puberty hormones are responsible for that for all of that development that's going to take place so even plants need hormones to grow if you see those really really tall trees and all different plants that are tall hormones are responsible for bringing that about so you can also define hormones as organic chemical messengers okay which are secreted directly into the blood this is in humans and in in, in animals uh, by an endocrine gland okay so hormones cause target organs to perform a specific function so remember when you're learning about the endocrine system you learned about the pancreas and the pancreas secretes insulin to decrease blood sugar levels so now that we understand what hormones are okay chemical messengers you need to understand that plants also have hormones okay so in animals hormones are produced at, at a special site okay but in plants hormones are not necessarily produced in specialized tissue okay the time taken by plants to react to a hormone concentration is much longer than in the case of animals okay so plant hormones are not true true hormones since they bring about a response only in the region of the plant where they are produced so later on when we're looking at the different hormones that are found in plants we are also going to be looking at where they are produced because in plants they are produced at a specific region okay and they will bring about change in that specific region not the whole plant so if the hormone is produced in the roots it will bring changes in the roots if the, the hormone is uh, produced in the tip of the stem it will bring about changes at the tip of the stem not the whole plant that is the difference between plant hormones and human hormones okay because when human hormones are secreted they're secreted uh, and an action is brought about all over your body but in plants a specific region um, will, 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 will react and in a specific region is where you're going to see certain changes happening so now Plant hormones are not true hormones since they bring about a response only in the region of the plant where they are produced. And the hormones that we are going to look at in this lesson are three. We are going to look at exons, we are going to look at giblerins, and we are going to look at uh, abscisic acid. Now, exons and giblerins promote growth okay promote growth but they just promote growth at different regions of the plant now remember when you were in grade uh, six when you were learning about different parts of a plant a plant has roots the plant has a stem the plant has leaves the plant has a flower so in each part of these plants certain hormones are secreted okay and when these certain hormones are secreted a certain uh, reaction or action is going to take place in each of those regions okay so we are going to take a look at that now now hormones are also important because they help plants to protect themselves so now you might ask yourself why do plants need to protect themselves plants need plants need to protect themselves from injury or excessive predation so in order to to protect themselves they uh, produce things like uh, chemical substances as you can see in the in the picture they um, start growing thorns all of this is a way a plant defends itself from predators because the plant also wants to survive and in order for the plant to survive it needs to have a a defense mechanism so if you're looking at the first picture you can see that the the it looks like a cactus cactus have thorns and you see the other picture there are thorns and you can also see in the other picture that there is what there's some sort of secretion that is coming out of the plant all of that is done so that the plant can defend itself from predators and what brings this about okay what causes these thorns to grow what causes these secretions to occur it's the hormones 
okay? So these hormones are not are very important, okay? Because not only do they promote the growth of the plant, but they also help the plant to protect itself against from uh, 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 predators and injury. So the first hormone we are going to look at is hormones that are called exons. So now, remember what I said. Exons and giblerins promote growth. Okay, they promote plant growth. All right, but now it's just that exons and giblerins are found at different locations uh, when you're looking at the plant. So now, a group of plant hormones that are mainly produced at the apical meristem of stems and roots. And I just want to show you where the apical meristem is. Okay, that is where you find the epical meristem, that yellow uh, uh, spot there. That's where you find the epical meristem of roots. And that's where you will find what? You will find um, exons being produced. Okay, so exons move down in the phloem to cells lower down in the plant. Small amounts of exons are produced in the growing point of the roots. And grade 12, you need to take note of this. You can't have too much of exons being produced, okay? You just need to produce the right amount because now if you produce too much of, of the exons, that will cause what? That will cause the plant not to grow, okay? So I've often seen question papers where they say a high concentration of exons are growing in this particular plant and that will what? That will inhibit growth. Okay, so you just need the right amount of exons. You don't need too much and you don't need too little. You just need the right amount in order for what? In order for cell division, cell elongation to occur. Now, let's look at the functions of the exons. Okay, so they stimulate cell division. Okay, so remember when you were learning about mitosis. Okay, so in order for mitosis to occur, we need exons. They stimulate cell elongation, meaning cells becoming longer. That is because of what? Exons. They promote apical dominance. They help develop advantageous roots. They cause tropic movement in stems and roots. So tropic movement is what we were looking at when we were looking at the sunflower. Okay, that's a tropic movement. When the flower is moving towards the light, that is considered to be a tropic movement. They also stimulate the development of fruit. Okay, so whenever you see a tree with uh, apples and oranges, just know that exons are responsible for that. Okay, because they stimulate the development of fruit. So I know sometimes students will say, what are advantageous roots? So those are, that's how uh, uh, advantageous roots look like. And then the other roots are your literal roots. Then we move on to the next hormone, okay, known as your giblerins, okay? So remember I said your exons and your giblerins are responsible for promoting growth, okay? So your giblerins promote stem elongation, they also stimulate cell division. They play a role in the germination of seeds, okay? So in order for seeds to grow, it is because of giblerins. They control the cell's enlargement. They promote the development of buds, flowers, and fruit development. And they are known to promote the development of seedless fruit. So now you might say there are similarities between giblerins and exons. But now, exons or giblerins, they stimulate the growth of side branches. Okay, so whenever you see a tree or a plant with side branches growing, just know that giblerins are responsible for the lateral buds or the, the, the side branches that are growing. They play in no part in the bending of a shoot or tropic movement. Okay, so later on when we are looking at different tropisms, you're going to see that certain parts of the plant will actually start bending. And what causes that bending is the exon, not the giblerin. The giblerin, the G, needs to remind you, it's seed germination. 
it also causes what elongation of the stem okay then the third hormone that we are going to look at is acetic acid now we have looked at two hormones that promote growth now this hormone is known to inhibit growth okay so acetic acid causes the stomata to close it promotes dominancy in both buds and seeds and it promotes abscissation so what you need to remember about abscisic acid is that it inhibits growth of seeds okay and it stops winter growth of buds thereby promoting dominancy of the buds it's important in the functioning of the stomata and it is responsible for the retardation of growth okay so if you're looking at this diagram now you get a clear understanding that there are certain hormones that promote growth and there are certain hormones that inhibit growth. The ones that we studied in today's lesson are your enzymes, your giblerins, and your abscisic acid. Your growth promoters are your enzymes and your giblerins, and your growth inhibitors is your abscisic acid. So I hope uh, it's clear and you, you have a clear understanding of the different functions of the different hormones, uh, plant hormones. Now, I want us to also quickly look at tropism. Okay, so remember we said a tropism is a response, okay, by parts of the plant to an external stimulus. Okay, think about the sunflower. All right, so stimulus can be light, gravity, or water. Okay. So, tropisms are divided into three. You have your phototropism, your geotropism, and your hydrotropism. Let's look at your phototropism. Now, this is a part, uh, or, or this is a plant growth response to light. So, when the plant is responding to light, it is known as phototropism. Okay, so think about the sunflower. Okay, um, stems grow towards the light okay so if you're looking at most stems they are upright they are growing towards the light so we call them and they are said to be positively phototropic or, or positively phototropic okay roots grow away most of the roots in our plants you see them they are underground okay so they grow away from the light and they are negatively phototropic Okay, then we have geotropism. Now, this is when the growth is response to gravity. Okay, this is when we are responding to gravity. Plants are responding to gravity. So now stems grow away from gravity because look at, imagine a stem. Stem is always upright. So it's, it's growing away from the gravity and we are, they are said to be negatively geotropic. Roots, on the other hand, grow, grow towards the gravity because most roots grow downwards. They grow downwards and they are found underground. So they are positively geotropic. Then we go to hydrotropism. Now, hydrotropism, this is a growth response to the stimulus, water. Okay, so stems grow away from water. Okay, stems grow away from water and are negatively hydrotropic, while roots grow towards water and they are said to be positively hydrotropic. So in this section, uh, um, grade 12, everything is pretty clear and it's pretty understandable. All you need to know is that you need to familiarize yourself with certain terms and I hope you understand today, I hope you understood today's lesson. Always go over your past papers to get good in answering certain questions. And thank you for listening. I hope you understood.